hello hi guys welcome to the channel i hope everyone are doing great and i'm also doing good so as part of the spark performance tuning series uh, now we are going to uh, learn about half heap memory i know many of the people uh, knows about this half heap memory but i never seen that any job or any any team are using this half heap memory and only few people know about this half heap memory you know usage so if you know the usage of this half heap memory you can still improve your execution time for your job right so let's talk about this half heap memory so first of all we need to understand what is meant by the half heap memory so usually whenever you create any executor so it will create one on heap memory okay so whatever the requested resources that you requested for like executor memory executor core so as per the configuration it will create one jvm so that is nothing but on heap memory so on heap memory memory management we all know that it has reserved memory and it has user memory and it has unified memory and inside the unified memory again will be divided as processing memory and the storage memory okay so we are we can try a line and we can consider this as a storage memory and this is a processing memory okay so two memories we have right so apart from this we can also create one thing like half heap memory so if you enable the half heap memory like we have some configurations so is the help of that configuration you can enable the half heap memory equal to true and you can uh, we can also specify the size of it okay so with the dot size configuration you can specify what is the size that you wanted so this half heap memory will be allocated one for executor okay so this will be managed by the os okay so this will not manage by the executor the basic difference is that jvm will actually managed by the executor and it also you know has gc gc is nothing but garbage collector like when you when you store any of the files in the storage area and if whenever you know you are trying to process something and it do not fit into the memory then gc will actually uh, takes a place and it will delete some unwanted uh, files and then it will uh, keep some room for the processing okay so that is the work of the gc so gc can uh, actually can help you to remove the objects and can clear some space in it but in in case of happy memory we do not have any gc okay so no gc so this is something that will be managed by the user and it runs under the tungsten uh, memory management okay so the next thing is when we should use this half heap memory so before that we need to understand one thing uh, that is nothing but serialization serialization and deserialization okay so serialization is nothing but converting objects to bytes okay converting objects to bytes deserialization is quite reverse like bytes to objects so what is meant by this bytes so these bytes are nothing but binary data something like zero ones okay so these objects are nothing but our regular class object like usually you write any of the program right so inside the program you can create the objects and we'll execute through that objects right so this is also a data but it will it has some overhead okay it has some overhead like metadata uh, to tell about this data so if your data was in object format then only spark or any engine can identify this and can execute your operations like joining grouping filter whatever the transformation that you wanted to perform it will be performed only on the objects not on the bytes right there are two places we can so mainly we can use rp memory and two places okay so one is like at the caching level or persistence persistent level okay so usually you know the persistence right like uh, it is a kind of a caching you are trying to access the same data frame again and again then you can actually use the cache so that it will save the data into the memory okay it will save the data into the memory and it will delete the lineage okay it will delete the lineage so that whenever you are trying to access the same object it will be you know fetched from the memory and it will process so that we can improve the job performance right so in the persistence we we have a many other options like memory only we have a memory only uh, no disk only and memory and disk memory and disk like this we have a something like half heap memory as well okay so the major advantage of this half heap memory right so if you keep your data in the memory only so that your memory will be get filled and you left with only smaller portion of the space to execute your job 
right so there are some cases where this portion of the memory was not required in this case what it will do it will actually spill the uh, data to the disk right so we have something like a disk so it will spill the data to the disk so when it spill the data to the disk so what are the problems that it will cause it is data spills data spills okay so and also to require to access this data again and again it requires a lot of input output operations okay and also in the disk the data will be mostly available in the serializer format okay so since it is available in the serializer format we need to convert the data first we need to convert the object data into the serializer byte format and then from byte format to the object format right so this requires some sort of a cpu cycles as well so because of this your memory only do not work in an efficient way or otherwise we need to allocate large number of you know jvm or unheap memory to your job right that is a one option second option we have is where we can get the you know super fast performance you know this is something like a super fast performance that you can get it from the memory only next option is disk only as i explained it here instead of storing your data it will directly spill it into the disk directly and it requires input output operations and uh, you know uh, serialization and deserialization so because of this it will be bit slow okay it will be slow because it needs to do these things but if you have any larger objects better we can spill, spill into the disk only okay so that's how the disk will come handy okay so the next thing is happy memory so if you want to keep your data in the memory only you have to get some performance benefits then in that case you can use the hop heap memory okay persistent level you can keep something like as a hop heap so in that case what it will do uh, instead of loading it to the disk it will actually spill to hop heap memory so that we can eliminate the input output operation so there won't be any input output operation in this case but still it has a serialization and deserialization problem like the conversion still required because hop heap memory by default will allow you to store your data in serializer format okay so why it allows to store the data in the serializer format because when it comes to the data size object uh, let us let say that assume that object is like 30 mb okay so if you convert that into serializer format it will be only 10 mb like data data size has reduced drastically so with the help of this technique we can store lot more data right so that's the reason rp memory can support the data only in the serializer format right so this is the one thing and the second one is shuffling shuffling okay so what is manual shuffling so whenever you use any of the wider transformation like joining grouping aggregated and all those things so data will be shuffled right so during the shuffle unheap memory was not sufficient to do the shuffling actually it spill the data to the disk and it will read the data back from the disk right so to avoid this step and if you wanted to see some performance benefit still you can use the half heap memory okay half heap memory and especially when you have a sorting sort operations in your job right so in those cases the shuffling uh, will be uh, really required so in this video we can focus on this persisting level and we'll see how this persisting can uh, really improve your uh, job execution time okay i'm creating a spark session with the executor instance as one and executor memory as one gb and executor cores are four and dynamic memory i'm keeping it off off now and half heap memory i'm enabling it true with the help of this config and i'm specifying the half heap memory sizes one gb okay so let's go ahead and execute this one Yes, it has executed. So now we can disable the AQA related properties. Good, it has disabled. Now execute this code, it's just like import function. So now I'm just creating the Spark with range of, you know, one to 10 lakh records. Okay, so I'm just creating some larger number of data frame records. Okay, so just go ahead and I create. And now I, I just created a method. Uh, this method actually take the data frame as an input and storage level and also label. So based on it, it will actually persist the data. Okay, it will actually persist the data and will uh, trigger an action count action because whenever we trigger an action, then only it, uh, the persist is going to run and will store the data actually in the uh, memory, calculating the time. Right, and then I'm trying to fetch the data from the persisted data frame, and I'm calculating the time. Okay, so this is the uh, small bench box storage that I have created. So let's go ahead and run this code. So now I'm passing the memory only option. Okay, so whatever the data frame that I have created, I'm trying to pass it into the memory and let's see how much time that it will take. Let's go ahead and run this one. Yes, it has taken 0 0.47 seconds. Now I'm passing the disk only. So instead of memory, I can pass the disk only. 
so it has taken 0 0.12 seconds okay so now we'll track about the heap memory it is you see 0 0.00 93 seconds okay so approximately if you see in this case memory only has taken a more time because it do not have enough memory to process its data that's the reason it has taken a, a long time right so now let's go ahead and we'll see uh, this rdd uh, operations okay so you see it actually created disk half heap memory you see half heap memory it has created and uh, half heap memory only it has created the data okay so let me show you in the park ui as well so now you see uh, this is actually uh, in memory uh, storage like you see this is a size in 9.8 mb that is in memory processing and this is the deserialized format so let's go ahead and explore more details inside this rdd okay so if you see this one it has the cached partitions are four total partition of size memory in size is 9.8 mb and if you see on heap memory issues was 9.8 mb and uh, remaining it says it has its remaining and half heap memory was like zero and still all the memory is available and disk nothing it has utilized and you can see all the four partition like uh, you know what is uh, in each size and other all other details now you see this is on the disk so even on the disk it will be the same like 9.7 mb so let's explore more details here and if you see this is actually cached partition 4 total 4 and you see memory size was 0 and the disk size was 9.7 mb and on heap it was 0 and everything is free half heap everything is free and only on the disk it is used 9.7 mb okay so the same thing you can see on the size on the disk in the memory is 0 and size on the disk is 2.4 2.4 into 4 partitions right so let's go ahead and we'll see in even on the half heap memory side yes now you see this is on the half heap memory and uh, serialized format it also showing the 9.7 mb but it is showing in the memory only because it is storing in the memory not on the disk okay so let's explore this and we'll see more details like you see it has four cache partition total partitions are four and size in uh, memory size was 9.7 mb and here you can clearly show that on heap memory uses was zero but off heap memory uses was 9.7 mb still it left with uh, 1014 uh, mb right so disk is also zero so same thing you can see it everything every partition has stored in half heap memory okay it also showed the block name as well right so you see this is the size in the memory and size in the disk was zero okay so this is how the half heap memory will be stored under the backend okay let's conclude this so half heap memory stores the data in the in memory only but it stores the data in the serializer format so we have another headache is we need to convert the data into the uh, deserializer format so that it we can execute okay so it is better than disk definitely and stores the data in the serializer format and required to deserialize to use okay so if there are any possibility that you know uh, you know don't want to use the disk then you can use this half memory it can definitely improve the performance okay so now let's see in what cases we need to use what okay so we have so we'll see something like a gc overhead okay so in case of the gc overhead we can use the half memory so when we can see this the gc overhead whenever the main memory was not required like the jvm on on heap memory was not required and jc gc will go and will try to delete this records right so in those cases uh gc overhead errors we usually get okay so we can use the half heap memory at those cases it will be useful to process the data and memory is not sufficient we can use the different techniques like we can also use the half heap memory or we can use memory and disk so that some portion of the data will be moved to the disk okay so next we need a better performance okay if you need a better performance definitely you have to use the half heap memory okay so if you want to if you want to reduce the jvm pressure then we have to use the serialized cache level so if heap is on off heap is also one of the serialized level okay so now we can see uh, the limitations like where we should not use the limitations okay limitations where we should not use the off heap memory the first case is whenever you have a large data sets okay so whenever you are trying to uh, perform any of the operation or trying to cache the large data frame don't use the half heap memory half heap memory is for small to medium range only not for the last so in those cases we have to use the disk so that will come handy and it will give the better performance compared to half heap the second thing is don't don't use larger half heap spaces okay larger half heap spaces okay why because this will be managed by the os and even os also requires some memory 
for its operations okay so for its operation for its processing and all and also if you observe our architecture like if you have one worker node so inside worker node if you have like two executors so if you requested 1 gb of each you uh, know 1 gb of the of each memory it will create 2 gb okay in the worker node so it has only so uh, you know less memory to execute for the os and other operations so we need to uh, understand that as well and the third thing is we need to ensure it it has a enough memory to use the off heap okay so because this there is no gc so there won't be uh, deletion once the data is processed in it okay so that's we that should be something i need to handle by user okay so you need to uh, carefully look into that one okay so i hope you like the content if you like the content please give a like and if you have any doubt or you want to give some feedback please comment on the video and please do subscribe for our channel to get more interesting informative related videos and this will also give some boost for me boost for me to make such informative content we'll meet again with the next video thank you guys